Hi guys. In this video, we're going to focus on being given the answers and then figuring out how do I write what the original problem was. Okay, so working backwards from the other problem. Before we do that, I need to point out something that maybe you noticed and maybe you didn't. But anytime that we get a square root in our answer, there's always two square roots in the answer. Because when we get a square root in the answer, there's always a plus or minus sign in front of it. So square root answers can never come by themselves. They always have a partner. If we think about this example, and we did one like this in our first video, I would be square rooting both sides and I get a plus or minus. Or if we're using quadratic formula, the quadratic formula actually has built into it a plus or minus sign. Now, also another thing we need to remember is that I is technically a square root. It's the square root of negative one. So not only will you always have a, um, a positive and negative radical in your answer when you have any rabbits in your answer, if you ever have an I in your answer, you'll also have a positive and negative version of that letter I as well. Okay. So again, it's really important to know that anytime that you have a radical or an imaginary answer, they always have to come in pairs, two of them, one positive, one negative. These are called conjugates. To start this video, we're just going to practice writing down the conjugates. So in this problem, it says, I have given you some of the roots to a problem, and it wants to know what are the other roots to the problem. In our first example, they've given you the roots negative 2i and the square root of 10. So we just said that i's and rads always have to come in pairs. So if negative 2i is an answer, that means that positive 2i also has to be an answer. And if positive rad 10 is an answer, that means that negative rad 10 also has to be an answer. That's mandatory, always happens, okay? Let's try one more. In this problem, I gave you a full on adding and subtracting question. Now you only have to change the signs immediately in front of the rad or the i. And if they give you numbers that are just straight up numbers, no rads, no i's, you don't have to find a pair. Numbers can be on their own. It's only rads and i's that come in pairs. So in this problem, if it says 14 minus rad 2 is an answer, then I know that 14 plus rad 2 is also an answer. And if 7 plus 8i is an answer, then I know that 7 minus 8i is also an answer. Okay, so everything comes in pairs. Make sure to read your homework carefully. There is a section where they literally just want you to write what the pair would be. There's another section though, where they not only want you to write the pair, but they also want you to figure out what was the original problem. So that's what we'll be doing next. So in this problem, I have given you um, the roots, the answers, and then I wanna know what was the original question. Now, none of these have rads or i's, so I don't need to write down any pairs. These are all of my roots. We've actually already done problems like this. Um, I think last week we did them. The last week we learned that if they give you the solutions, you're gonna take them and you're gonna do the opposite to write down the factored form in the parentheses. So x minus four, x plus one. And then with fractions, it gets a little bit trickier too. Uh, we don't usually write a fraction in the factored form. So since this was divided by three, I knew that there was a three being multiplied with my x. So for the fraction, you can take your denominator and you can put it in front of your variable, 3x minus 4. Now I'm going to go through this one really quickly because I'm trying to make these videos just a little bit shorter. They're running a little long right now. Um, so we're going to multiply two parentheses at a time. So I went ahead and multiplied these two. And then next I would multiply those two. And you can do box, you can do foiling. Um, I don't care what method you use as long as you're getting the right answer. So if you're getting the wrong answer, you might need to find a new method. All right, so this is my final answer. This is the polynomial function that when I solve it, I would get the answers four, negative one, and four thirds. One other thing I wanna point out, this has an exponent of three, and they initially gave me three answers. So that's a good sign. That means I'm doing it correctly. All right, let's do the tricky ones. Let's do the ones with rads and i's. So here I have a problem, and I have been given that the roots are negative two, five, and negative three i. Now, if one of the answers has an I in it, then I know that it should have a partner. And they didn't tell me the partner, but I know it exists, so I'm gonna write it in there. So if I have a negative three I, I should also have a positive three I. 
So in reality, this problem has four answers, even though they didn't write them all out. Okay, let's write the factored form. X plus 2, X minus 5, X plus 3i, X minus 3i. We can take them two at a time to multiply them together. So I would multiply these two together, and I would multiply those two together. The ones with the i's, these are a difference of square. So when you have a difference of squares, you can get your final answer. You can use a shortcut. It's just a squared minus b squared. So that's x squared minus 3i squared. 3i squared is 9. 3 squared is 9. i squared. And then hopefully you remember from, oh my goodness, like all the way back at Thanksgiving, that i squared is actually negative 1. So um, when it says minus 9i squared, that's actually like minus 9 times negative 1, and that'll change to plus 9. And then we multiply those two things together. I'm going to do that really quickly. I hope you're getting really good at multiplying things out with the box. Here's my final polynomial answer. Notice that it's an x to the fourth because I decided even though they only wrote three answers, there was a fourth one. They didn't tell me what it was, but I knew it was there. All right, we're going to do one that's really, really intense, and then we'll be done for today. Don't worry, we're going to practice more of these during our live sessions. All right, guys, for my last problem, I have uh, two roots, the square root of 6 and 4 minus 3i. Unfortunately, both of those have a partner. Both of those have a conjugate. So because there are two answers with a rad or an i, I do need to add two more answers. So the positive rad 6 also needs a negative rad 6. And then the 4 minus 3i also needs a 4 plus 3i. When I'm writing out my uh, parentheses, my factored form, I do want to group the conjugates next to each other because I'm going to multiply those together uh, first. So I went ahead and put my rad 6s six, next to each other at the beginning. And then another thing I want to point out, right, because we're subtracting these. So I did x minus the 4 minus 3i, and I distributed my negative sign. And then x minus the 4. So this first symbol always has to be a 4. And then the second symbols are going to be opposites. Now, for the x plus rad 6 and the x minus rad 6, I can do the difference of squares again. So I'm just square the first number, square the second number, minus sign in the middle. That's going to be x squared minus 6. The square root of 6 squared is 6. Um, so the first two are pretty easy. The second one is that's a trinomial times a trinomial. So we're going to box that out. The really cool thing that's going to happen in this box is that all of your i's are going to cancel out and disappear. Okay. It's going to leave us with nothing but nice whole numbers. All right. So if I'm looking in the top right corner and the bottom left corner, I have a positive 3ix and negative 3ix. Those will cancel. And then if I look on the next diagonal, 12i and negative 12i, those also cancel. And then the only i I have left is an i squared. And we said on the last one that an i squared is actually negative 1. So I can change that to a positive 9. So this actually turns out really nicely. It's going to be x squared minus 8x plus 25. This one, again, was x squared minus, and then the square root of 6 squared is just regular 6. For my final step, I'm going to multiply those two together. I'm going to use the box again. This one's a little bit easier because the uh, numbers are smaller. And here is my final answer. Now, again, we started with only two answers, but I did add two more because I needed their conjugates. So notice it's an x to the fourth. This concludes today's videos.